Hello, how you doing? This is Vince Hughes with Still Estimating Solutions. Welcome to Technology Day of the Fundamentals of Cost Estimating and Bidding. On Technology Day, we go through three different modules. Module 9 is going to go through eTakeoff. It's a takeoff software. Module 10 is going to go through Bluebeam. And Module 11 is going to go through the Still Erection Bid Wizard. In Module 9, what we're going to cover is a software called eTakeoff. We're going to talk about how to set up projects, how to set up the folders for plans, importing documents into the takeoff software, how to label and name your drawings, calibrating the scale, setting up details, drawings, measurements and traces, traces, how to create measurement tools, counting items, how to count beams, columns, and bar joists, how to count roof openings, moment connections, and etc. how to take off items shown in the details, and then taking off decking. Last, last but not least, we're going to go through exporting the report from eTakeoff into Excel or software like the Still Rex and Bid Wizard. Before we jump into that, though, I, I want to talk about getting set up for doing a digital takeoff, which is very, very important. In fact, I think it's the key to success when you take your estimating digital. And where you can find this document or this web page that we're looking at is under my, my website, stillestimatingsolutions.com. If you go to that page, go to the home tab, go to Still Estimating Solutions blog, and then once you land there, you go to categories. On the drop down, you go down and find Still Erection Digital Takeoff Process Video Series. You will find this, this page that we're looking at within that series. And while you're there, don't forget to look at some of these other items that you fi might find very useful. But on this page on Still Rex and Digital Takeoff Setup, I'm just going to go over this real briefly because I do, like I say, believe it's the key to your success of going digital. It's going to talk about types of computers you need, but my, my thing, I think, is the main thing is the monitor. You'll see here in this picture my setup. I have a 43-inch monitor and a, for the main plans and a 27-inch monitor for the detail drawings. I feel this is uh, very, very critical because you want to be able to see the plans on the computer screen just like you see them on a you know on your table in your office the bigger the better i mean you can get away with some 230 inch ones myself i have a 43 inch and a 27 inch for the details i would probably preferably have a 30 to a 33 inch for my detail drawings as well but i do get away with a 27 inch just fine but the main thing is to be able to see your main plans as big as possible like you see them on a plan table so with that out of the way i mean they do have just so you know too mine are computer monitors they do have some high def uh, uh, TV screens out there. They're a little bit cheaper. Myself, personally, I like to monitor because the resolution it can get super, super high. But I have been told that some folks are you know, having a success with a regular uh, high definition type TV. Another thing you'll find on this page too is a, something that's not necessary, but it's a mouse. And this mouse you can set up, it's a gaming mouse, but what you can do is set it up to do all the different things we need to do within the software and have it programmed to your mouse so everything I control through eTakeoff is done through my mouse, which really speeds up that process. But this is not a you know, necessity, it's just a you know something to help speed up that process. So with that said, let's just jump right in there and get into eTakeoff. So the first thing we gotta do is and talk about how do we organize our drawings. So basically you're going to come into this PC and you're going to look at your hard drives because we're going to have to start figuring out where we're going to store all our drawings at. I would suggest not putting it on your C drive because that's what operates your computer. So if you have a C drive that has a terabit of storage then that's probably fine. But some, most times Computers will come with multiple drives, and if they don't, you can get an external hard drive, get a terabyte, two terabytes of storage like I have, and we can start putting our plans there. So the process of that is we're going to come into this terabyte, which is an external hard drive. I open it up. I will right click and create a new folder. I'll call this folder projects. Of course, you're going to call it whatever you, you know, for your company, what they want. Then we open that folder up, and this is where we're going to start storing all our jobs. 
So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call this one impact And so that, that'll be your job name, but for this purposes, I'm just going to call it the name of the class here. And then within that folder, that job folder, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to create another folder. And we're going to call it the name of the job. And then plans, it helped, I could spell, I guess. So we name it plans. Then we're gonna create two more folders. We're gonna name that one of the folders addendums. And specs. Because you'll wanna always keep, when you're going digital, you wanna keep these files separate. You wanna have a plans folder, you want to have a dentist folder and you want to have a spec folder. Then we're going to, wherever we get the drawings from, whether it's from a plan room or somebody emailed me the drawings, you know, whatever that may be, we would download those drawings and we would put them into this, this folder, the plans. We put, of course, we put the plans in the plans folders, the dentist in the dentist folder, specs in the specs folder. So I would get these drawings from whoever sent it to me or wherever I got them from. I would open up the plan folder and paste them in here. Pretty simple process. I mean, that's no, no big deal, but that is the structure of how you want to get your plan set up moving folder forward. So basically what we're wanting you to do is create a project 2020 folder within that folder. We're going to set up the job name, a denims folder, create a denims folder, a plan folder, and a spec folder. And that's as simple as that is. So once we've done that, to bring plans into eTakeoff, very simple process. All we do is come up here to the top. And before, before I go into bringing plans in, let me, let me just step back a little bit. So we're looking at this software. It's called eTakeoff. When you look at the e takeoff or any takeoff software for that matter, when you're looking at it, you see all these buttons and all this stuff and it, it, it can become overwhelming. What I want you to understand is to do a digital takeoff or still erection is you don't need all this stuff. So for example, within e takeoff, we have a quick access toolbar. And I'm just gonna point out to you, all we need to know to be do a successful takeoff is right here in the quick access test toolbar plus a couple other items we have our select multi-select our dimension tool to check measurements our report to generate a report when we're done with the takeoff our search area set up and our search magnifying glass when we're looking for you know it's going to find us beans for us those four items we those items there we need to know we need to know about learning how to set scale up pretty straightforward and then we need to know a little bit about over here on the right hand side control panel work breakdown we have some tools that we'll be touching on name view setting up details over here on the left hand side we have our traces and down here we have our drawings that will come in once we once we bring drawings in but don't get overwhelmed when you look at a digital takeoff software thinking it's over you know there's just so much stuff because you don't need to know all that stuff you need to know about eight items to be able to do a digital takeoff for erection in, in, in a simple process. So with that said, to bring in plans, very simple. We go to this icon new, select it. It will open up a window. I go to this PC, go to my F drive, where it was my external hard drive that I created up the, the job folder. I go into projects 2020, impact estimating class, and I select the plans folder. Say okay. This window pops open. I always remove plans at the end of the name uh, name of the job, just so it's not there inside the software. All this stuff I don't need to fill out. I can if I want to, but it's not a requirement. I hate say okay. Now. 
then I get a list of the drawings that I'm going to be bringing in. If I was to bring in a bunch of different items, like the electrical and stuff like that came in, I could uncheck mark them here. Myself, personally, I remove plumbing, mechanical, and electrical before I bring the drawings in. I only get civils, architecturals, and structurals. So once I do that, I hit add. So now that the drawings are in, over here on the left-hand side, we'll be able to see the list of the drawings. Sometimes when drawings come in, depending on how the PDFs are labeled, they will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and so then we don't even know what they are. If that is the case, all we have to do to change them is go to drawing or to label them, is go to drawing, rename drawings, And here we can type in what that uh, page number is. Of course, these were labeled right, so I don't have to worry about it. But just so you know, you would type it in. And then if they were all, and I had to do them all, I would check mark that, hit next. And it will automatically flip me to that next page. <clears throat> and then I can label that one, go to the next page, so on and so forth. So that's how we label drawings if they came in not labeled. So now that we have all the drawings labeled, we'll want to go to the first page and start setting up to do the takeoff. So we're going to go to the first page that has a takeoff on it. So we're going to go to the second floor framing. Now to set up scale is very simple. We look at what the scale is. Eighth inch equals a foot. We come to the home tab. Come to the scale section. Do the drop down. Eighth inch equals a foot. Say OK. And then we have to check a measurement to verify that that is the, the correct, you know, dimension on the drawing based on that scale. So we come to the measurement tool, select it. We click on the grid line, go to the other grid line. Seventeen seven and three sixteenths. I would say that's close enough. And myself personally, what I do so that I know I've checked the scale on the drawing is I come over here to my global favorites, a tool I set up called scale checked. And I'll click on the plan and highlight it in green. That tells me I have set the scale in the drawing. It's very vis visual, so I know that I have the drawing, you know, set the scale. Then the next thing we're doing means we want to have the system count all the beams for us. I have to set up the search area. Come up to Quick Access Toolbar. Add the, the click on the rectangular search area. A window pops open. I put in second floor. then I just have to rope around the area that I'm searching and only the area I'm searching because sometimes in the notes there will be a beam and something like that in the notes and it'll count that so I set up the area I only am going to search then after that I go to the next page and do the exact same thing I go through every page that I have to do a takeoff on and I set the scale and set up search area on all the pages that have a uh, a takeoff to be done on. Then I go to my first detail drawing and I set up my detail drawings. To set up detail drawings, relatively simple, we go to name view, hit this little starburst, a window pops open and I named that drawing S301. I do have to be on that detail page when I'm setting these up, it's important to be. I say okay, go to the next detail drawing, Starburst and type in the sheet name. I can hit enter and page down, which will take me to the next page as well. Set up that detail drawing, name view, starburst, 
S401. Now I'm gonna do every single detail page that there is and set it up in the main view. The reason I'm doing this is now when we go back to that main plan is we have details, of course, we have to go to. So when I need to go to S401, I would right click on here initially, go show view and new extra drawing window, select that, and it put it on my other screen. Let me bring it over here. And it opens up a second view window that goes on a second monitor, which is why you want to have two screens. Now, what's nice about this is when I got to go to S5, S302, I hit these binoculars, I select S302. Now I'm at that detail page, S302. When I got to go to S301, binoculars, select the page, now I'm at S301. And so every detail page that I set up in name views is now with, listed within this binoculars. And all I'm doing is looking left to right. I'm not flipping pages. It's very simple to see what I got to do for the takeoff, look at it, and then go to the plans and do the takeoff. So with that said, that completes the takeoff setup process. And we're ready to start doing a takeoff. So we're going to talk a little bit about traces. So over here on the left-hand side is the traces. What I've done is I've created a library, basically a plugin that has every single thing, every task that's in the bid wizard, beams, columns, brace frames, handrails, stair flights, everything right at 300 tasks. I've already pre-built those to, into a plugin that goes into e takeoff. Now, when, you know, if you body take off and you didn't get still direction bid wizard, you would have to go in and set up your own beams, your own columns. E takeoff does come with a small list of beams, columns, and so on and so forth, but you, you'd have to come inside of settings, go to traces, you create new folders, which is real simple to do. I mean, once you come in here, all you have to do is right click and create a new folder, add a new trace, create a new folder. It's a uh, relatively easy to do, but basically what you're going to do is, as I've done, if I show you with inside of a, the settings window, I've got all these set up. So the 16 standard beam is the same thing we're seeing over here, and it's inside the folder of a rec standard beams. To add another one, all I have to do is right click, add new trace, and makes it a pretty simple process. They have videos with any takeoff on how to do that. But the beautiful thing about what I have to offer companies is I've already done all the work on this side as far as creating traces. We already have them all pre-built and it's just a matter of all these map to the same ones that are in the still direction bid wizard. So it makes it very simple to out of the box, get the software, load in the traces and you're ready to start doing a takeoff. So it's just, that's briefly about traces. They're already, like I say, already all pre-built and they're categorized by erect, connect, and install. So basically all this, you know, stuff we got to hang, all the stuff welds, bolts, and install miscellaneous items, stair flights, so on and so forth. So to do a takeoff, very simple. I mean, we're going to start looking at the columns. So I got to know what the lengths of the columns are, because if I come to my trace for columns, erect average columns, you're going to see I have it segregated 10 foot, 20 foot, 30 foot, 40 foot columns. I have different types of columns. I have tube steel columns. I have tiered columns, which is on a multi-story building where we have to splice the columns. But basically on this particular project, three-story building, I'm going to be going with 40 foot columns. And I'm not going to talk about too much about production rates in this video, but inside the Stillrex Bid Wizard, I already have tried and true production rates for every task that's in the Bid Wizard for labor, crane, and weld time. But we'll get more into that in module 11 when we go over the still direction bid wizard software so basically what i'm going to do for myself my process is to start taking off columns first so i would come here double click on the direct average 40 foot column and i'm just going to come to the drawing and i'm going to click on all the columns now granted i can go through here and count every single column but the idea of going digitally is to speed everything up that's the whole purpose of taking your estimating digital is to get fast. 
So what I do on a, on a building like this, and this is a typical square building, you know, for demo purposes, but I would look at it and I say, hey, do I have multiple columns that are the same, which I do. So I would take off just that one line, I would copy it, I would drag and drop to other the other like columns. And what this does is allows me to just take off one line of columns and then copy and paste the rest of them. Instead of me just being click happy all day long. So now we got to look at the drawing. So there's a couple more up there. So I'd go ahead and double click this again and count those. We got one there that wasn't typical. And I just got to kind of run around the drawing and look at for other columns that are not taken off. And it is important because these are size production rates. This little is a pop-up, so it's not going up all four floors. So I would knock this one down the column size and go with a 10-foot column because that's basically what that's going to be. These stair towers on the outside of the building go all the way up. So now we've taken off the columns. That's that's what I do first is columns. Then I go to beams. Beams, same same concept. I can come over here to the right hand side or the left hand side here, double click 1621, and run through here and just start counting them. Every time I click, it's counted. Again, we're looking for speed. That's why we're going digitally. This is what I think is a beautiful thing. Is now I can come here. Select my beam. I'd already set up the search area, so I come up here to the quick access toolbar, little magnifying glass. I rope around the W16 and mouse let go. Let me do that again. I rope around the W16X. And I don't get the weight because I only want to get the W16X. And not only do I want to get W16s, I want to get every single beam that's on this page. And I do that by adjusting the sensitivity. So the sensitivity right now is at 60. That's about right for beam. And what I mean by sen sensitivity is if we put that at 100, all we would find is the W16 beams and that's it. We have a lot of other beams. We got W21s, we got W12s, W14s, W10s. I want to find them all. So I put my sensitivity at 60. I check mark search all four rotations because I want to look every direction. Exclude previous count measurements and search immediately in the background. And on my first search on this page, I have to select the floor or the area I'm searching. And then I hit search. It's going to go in the background and it's going to start finding all these beams on the page. Now what's nice is I don't have to sit here and just wait for the search to get done. I can continue on doing my takeoff. So for example, I have some moment welds up here. I can go ahead and come down here to my moment welds. My moment welds and the bid withers. Production rates are based on pounds per foot. So these are W22 pounds per foot. So I would get the 0 to 29 pound moment weld and I can come over here and count those moments. And that search is still going on, so I'm not dead. I'm, I'm still, you know, being productive, doing some takeoff here. Over here, we have some channels, 6 by 6 by 0. 0.5. And so the way I look at it, when I'm doing a takeoff, if that channel is going to set like a beam, I'm going to take it off like a beam. Now, granted, I'm going to have to go to the detail and look and see if it welds. And if it welds, I'm going to add a little bit more. But most likely, that channel is going to bolt. So I'm going to come over here and just take it off as a 6 10 standard beam because it's going to set like a beam. So I run through there and count those channels real quick. That channel there would be with inside the landing and we'll talk about stairs in a moment. So I wouldn't count those because that's going to be built within the landing. And you'll also notice as you start going through there, you're going to start seeing some other things where, you know, you might have missed some columns or something when you're doing your takeoff. So then if that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and come back. I better count those columns while I see them. 
And once you start seeing this thing, it's going to be completely highlighted. So everything, if it's not colored, it's not counted. Let's see what else we got going here. And we'll talk about these little tubes that are around the perimeter of the building in a moment once we get to the details. But I'll kind of show you a trick on that as well because they're all over the place. But at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and stop and let this search uh, let this search complete. So once the search is complete, you're going to get this nice window that pops open. And we were looking for 16 to 21. So what I have to do is come through this list and you'll see a lot of stuff highlighted in green, some stuff in white. That's based on the sensitivity. So if I click this button down, everything will turn green. If I hit it white, everything will turn. I mean, if I go less sensitivity, everything will turn uh, white. But because I got some W21s down here, instead of me having to click on those, I would go ahead and run this down the sensitivity where it highlights all the beams. And then I'm gonna have to go to this list and I have to look and uncheck mark these W14s. And you wanna be accurate when you're doing this. Get the 10s out, the 12 out. We wanna leave all 16 to 21s highlighted. Now we're gonna filter through these and count every beam that's inside of here. That's why we got to make sure all we have highlighted in green is W16 to 21. And I believe I got them all. Now I'm going to hit save and continue. I don't hit save because I hit save. I'm done with this search. I hit save and continue. And now these beams stay. So I'll just sensitivity up to uncheck mark the other ones. Get all the W10s. Now I go to select. I change my beam size just by clicking on six to 10. Now I verify it's six to 10. I hit save and continue. And I check mark all my W14s, 12 to 14s, change the beam size. Save and continue. And then I check mark the W24. And just briefly so you understand how come I'm categorizing these out like this is because as a beam gets bigger we got more bolts right so inside the bit wizard the production rate for labor includes both in the beams in fact the production rate for the in the bit wizard includes on a beam to to unload shake out wreck bolt and torque so it includes that full process so the reason i'm categorizing the beams is because as the beam gets bigger there's more bolts that we have to install, as well as the beam gets bigger, it might take a little bit longer to manipulate it around the site. So we go through and we categorize every single beam. And then once we've got those all done, we hit save. And now when we look at this page, everything is, basically every beam on this page is counted. So my process, count columns, count beams, and then I do all count items, whether they're roof opening frames, Nelson studs, any count item I do first before I go to details. So the next thing on this page is, is uh, shear studs. The beautiful thing about the takeoff is I can come here to my Nelson stud, the shear stud, double click, and I can come over to the right hand side and assign a mu multiplier of 32. Come to the page and start clicking on all the 32s. Every time I click, you will see over here, it raises by 32. Again, we go digital to get speed. So instead of me going here and click happy all over the page, I'll select my shear stud, trace, go to my search magnifying glass, oh, my mouse is, I don't know if my mouse is going bad on me or what, but let me try that again. Rope around 32 in brackets. Adjust the sensitivity to about 90 because I want to find only 
32 in brackets because I'm assigning a multiplier. I'll search all four rotations and hit search. So now it's going to go through and it's going to find all the 32 in brackets. And then, of course, I'm going to have to go and do the 40s. Then I'll have to go do the 30s and so on and so forth. But, you know, one thing I could do if there's just some one-off ones, instead of me going and waiting to do the search again, I can go ahead and hit, come over here to Shear Stud, select it, type in 66, and I'll count this 66 while I'm waiting. And then I can change it by hitting E on the key, in on the keyboard. That resets it over here. And I can put in 26. And because I'm waiting for a search, anyway, this allows me to continue working while I'm sitting here messing around. You know, while I'm waiting, I'm not on downtime. I gotta count these anyway. Put in 14, come count these ones. And I do, in, on, on occasion, uh, you know, if I got 14 and there's 13, I, I like to throw in a little bit of extra shear studs in case, you know, we shoot one down, it goes bad. It just allows me some extra shear studs in there to accommodate for issues that we may have. But all I do is just keep on hitting the end key, change the shear stud count, and go count those ones that are kind of one off. If there's a bunch of them, I'll just run the search so I'm not, you know, having to go through and do everything. But I'm waiting on a search, so this this allows me just to continue working. It's got to be done anyway, so I'm not just sitting there waiting. Because like these 40s, I wouldn't count those. I'd let the search go ahead and do that for me. But if we got some one-off ones in there, I'll go ahead and just count them randomly while I'm waiting. There's 124. I'm going to throw six extra studs there. You know, you can be as accurate as you want. It's entirely up to you on how many extra shear studs you want to do. Or you could assign, you know, 26% after you counted them all. But... Entirely, you know, what, what you want to do when you're doing that takeoff. And as far as the search goes, just so you understand too, PDFs are made in layers. So sometimes PDFs will have multiple layers. And that just means that they drew something and they stop and they do something again. So there'll be multiple layers. And what happens when there's multiple layers on a drawing E takeoff has to go through every single layer and it's looking both directions ver vertically and horizontally so if there's a drawing with seven layers it has to go through every layer and look at it and so it can take the search a little bit longer if a PDF comes to you that has multiple layers we can't control that it is just the way that they uh, you know the way it's done from whoever developed the PDF Now the, the window pops open, we see a 32 in brackets. We verify there's only 32 in brackets. We go ahead and hit save. And then as soon as I hit save, I immediately have to go to the 32 that I searched, click on it, it will highlight all of them. And then I go to the right hand side and I assign the multiplier. So once I assign it, hit enter, you'll see I counted with that search 1,728 shear studs. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the 40s. And you'll also see, as you start going around drawings, you're going to see everything's highlighted, colored. But right here, it stop, pops out like a sore throne. Whatever reason, either the sensitivity or whatever it was when I did the search, those 32 in brackets didn't get counted. So I will just quickly come in here to 32 and count those real quick. And that's, you know, when we're going through this drawing, it's very easy to see when something doesn't get counted. And of course, we have these 40s that are going in the middle. And so for me, I would either, am I going to search those or am I going to just count them? When it's just like that, I would quickly come over and put in 40. Count these ones. Put 
then I would use a copy. And I would paste. And I missed two up there. So now we got everything counted, all the beams, columns, shear studs. And so the next thing we're gonna do is start going to details. Now, one of the, well, let's just talk, about, I'm, not, I'm not gonna go to all the details just to save time on the video, but you know, I'm just gonna, let's, let's just talk first before I go that, to a detail. To take off perimeter angle, very, very simple. I come to my angle, I have all different types of angles inside the bid wizard. I'm going to select the one that's going to be sufficient for this perimeter angle on this building. And all I'm going to do is come to the corner and I'm going to click around everywhere that there is perimeter angle. And so all we're doing is outlining the building. just by clicking on the perimeters. And you'll see very quickly, we know how many feet of angle we're gonna have on this floor. So we're at 657 feet, everything's highlighted, everything's easy to see. And then another, another benefit too of e-takeoff is right here in this detail, it has kickers going two foot on centers. So I would come to my average knee brace. Most softwares, I'm going to have to go and click every two foot. Which isn't a big deal, but it is time consuming. What I can do with e-takeoff is select the trace, average knee brace, come over to the right hand side. If it's two foot, four foot, six foot on centers, whatever it is, put in two foot. Click at the starting point, click at the ending point, and now we have 45 kickers, two foot on centers from that grid line to this grid line in a very, very quick fashion. Then another thing to point out too, so you're aware, is as we're doing this takeoff, we have this list right here being built for everything we got taken off. So it's just a running total of everything that we've got. We got 3,002 3, shear studs, how many beams, how many feet of angle, how many moment wells, everything. Every time I click on something else, it totals up or adds to this list. So that's just floating around. You can put it wherever you want, but it's kind of nice to be able to just kind of see it being built of what you know what you got taken off. Now, now let's look at a detail because this is something that I find very helpful when we're doing a digital takeoff is for speed. 7S302. So I will come here to 302, right click, you an extra drawing window. Now in this particular detail, I'm gonna go ahead and make it full screen. This would be on my second monitor, but on seven, what we're gonna see on seven, and the reason I'm showing you this detail is, this is one thing that we can do in e-takeoff that is becomes powerful. So I look at this detail, and I have a wind girt, a seven by five by quarter inch tube that I have to weld in. I got two kickers and two wedge anchors. So basically, if I had this detail sheet on my other monitor, I would look at that and all the way around this per perimeter, we got these little columns that that's happening now. So what I would have to do to take off that detail is I would come here and I'd go to tube, weld vertical tube, count it. And then I have to go to the average knee brace, count two of them. And I have to go get the wedge anchors and, or the, yeah, the wedge anchors and, and count two of them. What I would do instead in this particular case, which is a time savings feature, is I would go to that sheet, 7S302. I would set the scale on this plan. plan
and then I would do this takeoff. There's my tube, and I would make this takeoff tight, and there, there'll be a reason why. It'll make sense to a minute. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the tube right there in the middle, even though it's up here. I'm gonna add it right there. I'm gonna go to my average knee brace. I'm gonna click one, click two. So there are two of them. And then I'm gonna come to connect and we're gonna grab what side is it saying halfway in? We're just gonna grab I'm just gonna go with the three eighths. I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna click there. So I did that takeoff on the drawing itself. Once I've done the takeoff, I will go to multi-select. The difference between multi-select, so if I go select, that means I can only highlight one thing. So I can only get one of those tasks highlighted. Multi-select allows me to rope around everything and highlight it. So I'll rope around everything and highlight it, left click on it, drag it into project favorites, right click, edit description, name it 7S302. And then I would also come to uh, say okay. And then I could come up here to work breakdowns just so you're aware that it's there. If I wanted to know, I can come here and tell it detail 7S302 up here as well in the report. That way all these would be assigned to 7S302. Once I put it in the project favorites, instead of having it still on this detail page, I would go ahead and highlight it and delete it because there's gonna be some dollars added because of that. So I just remove it now from the, from the detail page it's in my project favorites. Come back to the drawing. And I drag and drop to each location where that is going to be happening at. What that does is instead of me having to go and count all those times, clicking what six times at each location. I can just drag and drop and I'm getting my quantity takeoff in a quick, easy fashion. And so you can do that with multiple things inside of each takeoff, whether it was a typical floor. If this floor is the same as the other floor above, I would be able to finish the takeoff on this floor, on the second floor, if the third floor was identical, then I could go to that third floor and Put, well, I put a second floor into project favorites, then I can go to the third floor, drag it out of project favorites, put it on the third floor, and now I have that takeoff done as well. So basically, I would go around this whole drawing and drop that takeoff at every one of those columns around this perimeter. Just a quick way to speed everything up. Now, the, now we've got everything taken off. Let's say we went to all the details and we completed. When I finish the detail, I simply highlight it in yellow. Just like you're probably doing right now on your hard set of plans. That way you know it's done. And then I go to the next detail and, and go around. So that, that's basically the process of going to each detail, seeing what it is, doing the takeoff of what it is, and then highlight the detail in yellow, go to the next one. So then the last thing that I do is take off decking. And that's uh, real simple to do. We come to metal deck. At this deck, we got to see what the deck is. And it's saying it's inch and a half. So I come here to inch and a half welded deck. Click on the perimeter of the building and just run around the building. In a very quick fashion, we just took off 14,000 square foot of deck. Doesn't matter the shape of the building, if it's a pie, if it's whatever it is. You click around the perimeter of it, it gives you the exact square footage. Now, one thing we did forget to do was take off safety cable. 
So within the bid wizard, just so you see that as well, is I'd come here to my safety cable, double click on it. And I click around the perimeter of the building. Not a, not, not a big deal, but what, let me show you something it does once we you know calculate how much cable. If I come over here to the left hand side, you'll see the length. It doubles the length because there's two runs. It's also going to tell me how many turnbuckles and how many cable clamps I need for that particular floor. So it kind of dials that in. And then of course now we got safety post. What's cool about safety post is we just click around the perimeter. Before we have safety cable app. And it's going to tell me how many safety posts I have to install because it's based on a multiplier of eight foot on centers. And we got 62 safety posts that we got to weld in for that safety cable. Now, granted, we got some columns here that we don't have to weld the post in, but we probably most likely have to weld well washers on it. So it's entirely up to you whether, you know, you want to change that spacing or whatever. I find it's pretty accurate. Some places you'll find you have to put some safety posts out in the middle of the floor. So it's kind of a wash. But one again, that comes down to your particular preference. But it does calculate how many safety posts on center we have. And then the next thing we're going to go to is uh, stairways. You can take the stairways off on the plan right here. Myself, personally, I like to take this, the stairways off on the elevation drawings. Because it's visual and I, I can see it and it you know, just makes sense. So, so here's the stairs. course I'm going to take off the columns and beams in the structure I've already set the scale just to speed up things but all I'm going to do on this stairway to take it off very very simple is I come to flights I've got four different categories four different production rates in the bid wizard you have to figure out what's the right one for you but I select it and I come and count the flights and I go to my landing 10 foot landings count the landings Go to my handrail, guardrail going up perimeter. Actually, the guardrail is going to be on both on this particular one since it's outside. Instead of having a wall rail, we're going to have guardrail on both sides. So I'll run up through there and I'll count that guardrail or take it off. And then once I take it off, if it had been a wall rail, I'd come back and count the wall rail. But being this is going to be guardrail on both sides, I copy it. And I drag and I drop it offset a little bit so I know I've got two guardrails there. And now that's taken off. Now what's cool about e takeoff, or any takeoff of that software for that matter, I can categorize my bid very, very easily. And what I mean by that is when I finish a takeoff, if I want to take off my stairs separate, which I do, I take everything off, all the floors separate, areas separate, stairs separate. But I can categorize these stairs as a, in that own category. So once I've done a takeoff, I would come here, multi-select. Type in stairs and rails, whatever you want to name it. And now in the report, that is going to be assigned to stairs and rails. And then, of course, when I go back to my takeoff page, and I'm completed with that, I can highlight it, rope around everything, go to the work breakdown area, put in second floor, and now all that's gonna be assigned to the second floor. And so I'm, I'm gonna jump up here on the roof just to show you one more thing too, we're gonna kind of be hypothetical, throw something out there. Up on this roof, we have bar joists. So instead of me this being a roof on a on a uh, building, I'm going to pretend like this is a warehouse. And instead of these being being girders, I'm going to pretend like they're or being beams. I'm going to pretend like they're joist girders. And just to to kind of give you an idea of how you know the different processes that you can use for the different types of projects you have to do a takeoff on, and the speed that it can help you out doing that. So let me set the scale real quick.
Well, I'm not going to worry about measuring it just for this demo purposes. So what, what I would do on this particular, if this is a warehouse building, we got, you know, these beam lines with joist girders and columns. So the way I would tackle this takeoff, just so you understand on how you can pick up speed, I'd find out what the elevation of the column is. Because when we're doing a takeoff, it's all about speed and accuracy. How quick can we get something done and how accurate is that takeoff when we're done with it? The more jobs we can take off, the more jobs we have potential of winning. So I would take off my columns, then I come to my joist girders. Those are under 50 foot, I'll count those. Then, of course, we have the little kickers going from the joist to the joist girder, typically two per bay, or four per bay, depending on what the length is. So I'll count those real quick. And I show you this because it just really, and one thing I can do is that I click on it every single one, I can highlight those, copy. So it's all about how can I do this faster? I mean, that's what it really comes down to. In my opinion, what can I make everything faster? And get everything counted. So now once I've counted all those, I have typical other grid lines. So then I would just highlight them all. And of course, this isn't, this isn't what's on this project, but we're being hypothetical saying this is a warehouse. But it, it is potentially, you might be bidding a lot of warehouses. And nowadays with this Amazon's 2 million square foot buildings, it's insane how, uh, how big those things are and how many you know, bar joists and stuff they got in that thing. But you can take off of Amazon very, very quickly in this process. And have a 100% quantity detailed takeoff so you know you're getting everything picked up. So once that's done, I would highlight that, put it to each one of the column lines, and I come to my joist. Thirty foot joist. Go to that bay. And it's funny. It seems like this uh, recording software is making my computer slow down because it seems to lag on me every once in a while when I'm counting the stuff. So I'm having to slow down a little bit, let it catch up. So I count that Joyce Bay, and let's just pretend because right now, just so you understand, on Joyce, the production rates and the bid wizard includes the unload, shakeout, set, bolt, or weld, and bridge. But if we had X bridging, so if once we get up past 50 foot, they're going to start putting X bridging there as well. Or if a drawing particularly set X bridging, so then what I would do for X bridging is I come, go to bridging, bolt at X bridging, tell it what the joy spacing is over here, 5 foot. Well, it said there's two. Then, of course, after we finish that, we'll multi-select. Select these. Drag and drop. And then if I'm doing an Amazon, you can just imagine how much time savings you could get because it's just a matter of doing one bay and then it's typical. And then in an Amazon, we have multiple pages, right? So we go to the next page, it's the exact same thing again. Bays are probably pretty much the same. What I will do is I will take it again, multi-select, drag it into project favorites, edit, Joyce line or whatever you want to call it. Now when I go to that next page, it, it is typical. Joyce the same, X is the same, 
now I have to do is drag and drop from here, drop it on the plan. Do the same thing with the column lines, throw it in, in uh, project favorites. I already got my column lines built. Hence, you can see how fast you can 100% quantity take off of a 2 million square foot Amazon in a very, very quick fashion. So I just kind of wanted to show that just so you kind of get an idea from another perspective as well on a different type of a construction. Uh, thinking, make sure I look at my list here and make sure that we covered everything. So the last thing would be to show you is exporting that takeoff out of the out of the software. But first, let me name this real quick. get the report to come up it's just a matter of coming up here to the quick access tool bar, bar hit measurement summary and it clicked happy there it went too quick and here's the steel erection bid wizard report that comes out of here this will go into Excel all I have to do is highlight that sheet Hit that little floppy disk there, name it, whatever the job name is, take off, navigate to the job folder, and drop that Excel file there, because it comes out in the CSV file. Uh, but basically, that's what the report looks like, set up. You'll see the different areas, third floor, stairs, rails, second floor. Everything is assigned to an area by the way we took it off. Export it out. This imports from the bid wizard, which I'll show you uh, in module 11 for the still erection bid wizard. But all in all, I believe that covers everything that I'd like to show you in e takeoff. Let me just pull this page up. If you do have any questions, uh, definitely reach out to me. Again, name's Vince Hughes. There's my phone number, 505-249-2390. My uh, website, if you'd like to go look at the video for the blog that I have about, you know, what you might need for doing a digital takeoff, stillestimatingsolutions.com. I do appreciate your time and hope you got some value out of this and you can see how taking your estimating digital can truly save you a ton of time. We'll see you in the next video.